Welcome into the Michigan Football Report. By popular demand, I'm bringing back stock up and stock down for the Michigan football team. I know little John Runyon got kind of mad at me last year. I had been stock down early in the year, so I stopped doing it. But uh, you guys want it back, so we're going to bring it back to you after Michigan's second game. They're 2-0, but a second game against Army that was very uninspiring. So I had to kind of pull, uh, you know, just trying to pull some things out of the hat to get uh, some people with stock up. But one man who was stock up definitely compared to his first uh, game was Ronnie Bell, the second year wide receiver, a guy who was targeted several times into the end zone, didn't come up with any catches in the first week, was really Michigan's only wide receiver, in my opinion, that showed up, that was reliable, that didn't uh, either run route short or, or drop the ball, you know, anything like that. He was Michigan's leading wide receiver, even though he was not the leading snap count uh, getter, as you saw uh, on last week's show, he had the most snaps from the wide receiver position in week one, uh, was third behind uh, Nico Collins and Tariq Black in this game, but seven catches, 81 yards, a long of 25, and it was a lot of stuff out of the slot, dragging across the middle, coming across the middle from both sides of the field, being a uh, just a little dump off to Shea Patterson and made a really nice catch when, I don't know if Shea threw behind him or if Shea tried to hit him where the defense wasn't, but early on, uh, Bell caught one that was behind him, kind of did a spin move in midair and caught a ball and, and took it down to allow Michigan to get uh, in, in striking position for a touchdown. So Ronnie Bell, the sophomore, the guy who was going to be a basketball recruit and came uh, to Michigan at the, at the last minute, is now potentially their, their leading, you know, maybe their best wide receiver through two games. I know he had some struggles in the first game, but he was the only guy that showed up in this game when Tariq Black and Nico Collins got the bulk of the snaps. Those three players all together were really the only wide receivers who got snaps at all. I can kind of just tell you, uh, Quinnius Johnson had six, Mike Sainer saw only two, and Giles Jackson won out of the, the big three, Black, Collins, and Bell until Peoples Jones comes back. They got all the snaps, but Ronnie Bell was the only one that had the stats to back it up. So I want to ask you guys this question. If you saw my Michigan football report news and rumors that went out on Monday, when Donovan People Jones returns, expected against Wisconsin, who is Michigan's number one wide receiver? And, you know, is Ronnie Bell going to have to take a step back because it doesn't seem like the coaching staff wants to run four wide receiver sets, seeing way too many two tight end sets in there, certainly more than four wide sets. So who is Michigan's number one wide receiver when Peoples Jones comes back? And what I mean by that, who's going to get the most targets? Who's going to be in the game the most amount of plays? Answer below in the comment section. I got to leave you to leave that Donovan People Jones based on what I've seen through the first two games. I'll let you guys decide on what you think below in the comments. Guys, subscribe to the Michigan Football Report on YouTube. If you've seen during the season, the content really ramps up. We've got highlights after every game. We've got my Michigan football grades, news and rumors and injury updates in the week and segments like this. If you guys watch these stock up, stock down, we're able to roll more of these segments out throughout the year. So get us to 5,000. We're within striking distance. You guys came through last week with the comments. Now let's get the subscribers, youtube.com slash Michigan TV. Also stock up, Zach Charbonnet, after getting the maybe surprise start, the first what, Michigan football freshman since 2008, Sam McGuffey. We all remember Sam McGuffey to get the opening game starter uh, start at running back. Charbonnet, although his stats were a tad, I don't know, uninspiring with 33 carries for 100 yards, only three yards per carry, he was the only guy to get the ball in the end zone against, uh, against Army. All three of Michigan's touchdowns came in short yard situations from Charbonnet, and he has cemented himself as the starting running back. 72 snaps on the day of Michigan's 80 offensive snaps. Zach Charbonnet was in the game. We had Christian Turner in there for 12, and Ben Van Sumren, which the math there says there was at least four or five plays where you had two running backs in the game. But nevertheless, 190 yards through two games, 41 carries with obviously the huge bulk of those 33 coming against Army. Average eight plus yards a carry against, uh, against Middle Tennessee State. On the, uh, on the limited amount of carries, eight that he got. So 90 yards in the opener, 100 in the second one, 4.6 yards per carry. I think you need to get that up to five, five and a half to be a, a viable running back for a championship level team potentially. But three touchdowns, I'm not sure if you can ask for anything more from Michigan running attack, not knowing anything about who's going to be the starting running back going into the opening game. But Charbonnet, stock up, true freshman, has cemented his position and is the 
really the only option Michigan has at running back because we've seen a little bit of limited time from Christian Turner. Ben Van Summeren got a touchdown last week, but he also had a fumble this week. Uh, hasn't impressed as some thought that he would, myself included, coming into uh, to the 2019 season. So Charbonnet, Ronnie Bell, number one and number two on our Michigan football stock up for uh, the team after the second game of the season against Army. Guys, if you watch the game on TV, you should have done it with my TV choice, our partner for the 2019 Michigan football season. If you didn't, you can still uh, you can still get, get get going. Eliminate commercials from your vocabulary. Never get those boring all-state commercials. Start tonight with Monday night. Or start. I'm sorry, tonight with Monday night football. Start with Thursday night football, week two of the NFL, Monday night football, Sunday night football, and a bunch of great college games like the Clemson game, like the Ohio State game on Saturday. Go to the commercial breaks. You will see awesome sports updates, news, high, you know, news, uh, trivia, all kinds of things from Chat Sports and some other sources. Chatsports.com slash my tv make sure you dm me when you do it let me know what you think we'll put you guys on an upcoming show download it today chatsports.com slash my tv all right last on our stock up aiden hutchinson and there were some hutchinson haters out there on uh, on the internet in the middle of the game saying it looked like he was taking plays off i didn't necessarily see that uh in the game but i do know that he was the guy i noticed in the stadium in the second half that was really limiting an army offensive tack that was getting three, four yards a carry every carry in the first half, kind of started limiting them some zero, some one, some two yards, came up with, uh, along with Quiddy Pay and Josh Uchey, absolutely annihilated the army offensive line on that uh, on that last play of the game, forced the fumble with Quiddy, and, uh, and that, I guess, that's his half of sack, forced that fumble, one half tackles for losses and 10 tackles. Michigan only played a three, down off a defensive line set the entire game. Three down linemen, no Michaels one four. It seemed like they wanted to go to a three three five or a three two six sometimes even. La, you know, five defensive backs almost the entire game. Two three deep line, uh, linebackers the entire game, and only you know three defensive lines. So I think Michigan was was going to allow Army to attempt to run the ball up the middle, and we're not going to give them anything to the outside. It certainly you know, seemed that that was the the right call. I didn't think the defense played as well as the stats uh, proved out to be, but really limited uh, Army in the second half. The time of possession was wildly uh, in Army's favor in the middle of the second quarter. Came back to near even, which is a surprise given how Army plays offense. And a lot of that is credit to the defense. I thought Aiden Hutchinson, along with maybe Lavert Hill, Josh Metellus, you know, getting those uh, those turnovers, were the guys that stood out for me on uh, defense in the second game against Army. We'll see if that uh, persists going forward. Those guys will have to come up big, the defensive line, against Wisconsin on September 21st. Guys, if you haven't yet, I'm going to host this weekend, I'm going to host a Instagram Q&A you know, while Michigan's not playing on Saturday. I might do it on Friday. We'll have to see. But make sure you follow up. Un unlock the account. Not private anymore for a while. Go ahead and follow. Everybody's getting approved. You get an approval. You get an approval. Michigan Football Report on IG. And I'll go back to private in a couple days because I've got some big time information that you're going to want. I want to put it on Twitter for the blog boys to steal it. So go ahead and follow it today. You won't be the last guy to know the information on Michigan football, like the folks who watch, uh, listen to Maze and Brew and Lion Sam, aka Liar Liar 2, the movie starring Sam Webster, because all that guy does is tell falsities on Michigan football. Let's take a look at our stock down. Stock down after two weeks is your head coach, Jim Harbaugh. Completely uninspired looking team. Completely baffling calls. And I got back into the office after a Michigan a weekend in the state, the great state of Michigan. And some of the talk was, what the hell is Jim Harbaugh doing for? You can kick a 35 yard field goal, 36, and basically win the game. Yet you're going to go for it on fourth and two. Shays her. You're going to hand it off again to, to, to Charbonnet. Uh, really baffling play calls of when to go for it on fourth down, when to not go for it. Um, the team looked undisciplined, specifically. Uh, could have won the game in the in the first overtime, maybe won the game, but Army had the ball third and five, third and six. I don't have the exact numbers on me, and oh, no, maybe third and four actually. And Michigan gets a you know an offside. A guy jumps jumps the line, kind of baffling. Too many nice plays on offense turned around on offensive linemen jumping off sides or holding stuff like that. At one point, I believe Caesar Ruiz just basically fell over when he's trying to snap the ball. I thought that was a little baffling. 
Harbaugh is, you know, we're gonna we're just gonna start start calling him ten and three if Michigan loses a game against Wisconsin in a couple weeks because. From what I'm seeing, this is a 10 and three or worse team. You could be trending more towards that 2017 eight and five. He's had some good success against Wisconsin in three games, two wins, a blowout win last year, and in 2016, a win against, I believe was top 10 teams, may have been top 15, but at the time, uh, I can't remember what they are, but those are both top 10 teams, if not higher, towards the end of the season. As make sure to follow me on Twitter at James Yoder. If you want a better game day experience with highlights and analysis, I got some of my post game instant analysis, and you'll never know, uh, you'll never be wondering when I've got a new video out on YouTube because I always tweet them out. So go ahead and follow me at James Yoder on Twitter. Voted by my mom, number one Twitter follow on Michigan football in the entire galaxy. Number two on my stock down, Mr. F minus minus himself. Josh Gaddis, that's the grade I gave him after the second uh, game. And I'll tell you, Gaddis came in, he's like the Cleveland Browns of, uh, of assistant coaches at this point because the Browns all offseason wanted to, to talk trash and tell you how good they were going to be and do all this stuff. Gaddis wanted to be Mr. Social Media, create his own hashtag, show up on private jets, yada, yada, yada. Want to talk trash to Mike Loxley, his co-offensive coordinator at Alabama, but the results have been mediocre. And media, that's an insult to mediocrity, to be frank, because this is the offensive results from two games. And again, these might be two of Michigan's worst four or five opponents they'll play. We'll see how Army turns out this year. Certainly, Middle Tennessee is one of the worst, you know, one or two opponents. But total offense, under 400 yards per game, not speed and space. Frankly, the only speed and space I saw against Army was from Jay Harbaugh's special, or not Jay Harbaugh, um, from the special teams when Michael Barrett, the backup Viper high school quarterback, threw to Dax Hill, and, and that's that. 396 yards per game for the offense. They took the stats away from me, but you guys saw them as I was talking there, in the 70s for, 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 for points per game and, and total offense and passing. It's just a very ugly, rudimentary offense. They had a couple drives against Middle Tennessee State where it looked cool, but all I'm seeing is bunching and, and all this different stuff uh, for the rest of the game plan. So grade Josh Gaddis' offense after two games, give me A, B, C, D, or F. Maybe just grade Josh Gaddis. Maybe not the offense, just the man, whatever it is. Now, the players are doing great. They're just being put in bad positions by the coaches. I'm going D minus for maybe D. I'll go to solid D for Josh Gaddis. Uh, you had about a quarter and a half of, of good play, six and a half quarters of very average 1995 uh, football. Next up on my stock down, and people are going to say, what are you talking about, Yoder? It's Dylan McCaffrey, because all of you uh, couch quarterbacks or couch coaches who want to just sit there and trash Shea all day and hype Dylan McCaffrey up uh, to anybody who will listen across the, the internet, in person, at the games, of course, the goes, folks you who want to cheer when McCaffrey comes in for a few snaps throughout the game. You know, if Shea's playing so bad, which I don't think he does, he is, I think he's, he needs to figure out what's going on with those fumbles, but both of those from Saturday could be blamed on poor blocking from, uh, from the blind side. But if Dylan McCaffrey's playing so good, why isn't he getting more snaps? Why isn't he getting more passing attempts? 11 snaps from, uh, in the Army game, down from his 20 or so that he got in the Middle Tennessee State games. Zero carries, they don't trust him to run the ball. I don't know what happened there. I thought he was a great runner. Uh, no yards. 0 for 1 in his only passing attempt. So Dylan McCaffrey, if he was as good as you guys are trying to portray him, if he was better than Shea, which he's not, at least as of this this point, he would have gotten the game when Michigan started off with a turnover, when the offense looked like it was struggling, really was struggling the entire game, most notably the first half when they put up seven points and were down uh, against an Army team at, at halftime. So if, if McCaffrey was as good as you guys want him to be, not all you guys, just the, the team Dylan guys, um, then he would have been, he'd be in the game. He would have gotten, you know, alternated possessions with, uh, with Shea Patterson on Saturday when things weren't looking too good. When they brought him in, it would have been for more of a play than a play here or there. They would have kept him in the game in overtime after Shea went down towards the end of regulation and Dylan had to come in to hand that ball off to a couple guys. So, well, I told you guys I had to put this here. I don't, this is just ridiculous. I don't want to hear from any of you Dylan people, but we've got limited studio time here today because the big bad Cowboys report wants to come in and film. So I guess answer the question, because it's on the screen. Team Shea or Team Dylan, use that hashtag so uh, so we can be cool like that in the comment section. Team Shea or Team Dylan. And I'm not referring to producer Dylan, who took three hours to get the highlights out on Saturday. I'm talking about Dylan McCaffrey, 
So don't, uh, don't be caught off guard there. Team Shea or Team Dylan? Yoder is all in on Team Shea. That's my quarterback. You might see me after the, after the Wisconsin game put on sunglasses and put a couple of tears on my eyes if I see any more of you guys talking trash about Shea Patterson. And if you're going to not go to the Wisconsin game, if you're going to watch it on TV like a normal person, because who would travel up to Wisconsin? It's probably snowing up there already. Do it with MyTV Choice, chatsports.com slash MyTV. Download the app for iPhone. It's like, is it an iPhone app? Is it a TV app? It's an iPhone app that takes over your smart TV. All you got to do is connect it to Wi-Fi, let it listen to the game, or tell it what game you're watching. And the second the game goes to commercial break, My TV Choice takes you to awesome sports videos from Chat Sports and some others. So if you want to see our people on screen during commercial breaks and have it seamlessly go back to the game the second it's on, get going with My TV Choice. ChatSports.com is my TV and DM me. I want to give some shout outs to people who use it and download it. So get some testimonials, how awesome that it is. Go ahead and do it today. Thanks so much for watching the Michigan football report. You're on YouTube. You're watching me. You got nothing to do except for watch this video right here and watch this video right here. And before you click those, just quickly click this subscribe button. Get us to 5,000 subscribers before uh, they, they turn this into the Maryland football report. Go blue.